Welcome back to Remember This Tech. So today we're going to be revisiting an old AMD X2's 4850E processor. It's a dual core. It was released back in 2009, so it's going on 13 and a half years or so. What can it do in 2023? Well, that's what I'm going to find out today in this video. We're going to do some benchmarks. We're going to test a few games, older and a little bit newer for that era, but not too new because it probably can't handle it. And we're going to see what kind of minor upgrades we can do to make it run a little smoother. Can it do anything in today, 2023, or is it just a paperweight? Stay tuned and find out. So I haven't seen this computer since I built it back in 2009 for my parents as a basic entry level computer. So all I know is the CPU was a 4850E X2 AMD. But they packed it pretty good. So on first inspection from the back side, everything's clean. I mean, right? I know. Bare bones though, I guess. We do have a VGA onboard LAN, four USBs, audio, and PS2 ports for the keyboard and mouse. Let's flip it around. It's probably it's a little dirty on the front. A super multi burner drive, front USB ports here, and front audio and microphone jacks. It's pretty good. So I say we pop open the case and see what the inter internals look like, eh? It's probably gonna be like big dust bunnies in there and all kinds of, all kinds of crud, right? One could imagine. So let's see. Mm, it's got one of these funnel, air funnels for the CPU fan. Remember these ones? old cases take a closer look at this there's basically no dust at all like it's looks like it's pristine like it's never been used almost you can see a closer look in there it's a micro atx board it is the t-series ta760 g m2 plus motherboard um This is the motherboard I put in my parents' computer, and it came out in 2009, almost 14 years old now. So press pause if you need more time to look at something. TA 760G M2 Plus. It supported a wide range of hot AMD processors, DDR2 dual channel RAM, integrated HD 3000 graphics. It's really crappy onboard graphics. You really can't do much nowadays. Six SATA 2 connectors, which is pretty nice. A gigabit Ethernet. Four USB 2.0 and three on the header. All right, so I cheaped out on the power supply back in the day, I suppose, I guess you would say. 600 watt fully modular power supply. So Roswell, so you're not talking super top end. Nowadays, I'd go with something better, obviously. But for a budget use back in the day when I didn't have money from my parents, this is what I got them. This board has six SATA ports and one hard drive in here. DDR2, one gig. So there's two gig of RAM in here, DDR2. I guess that's fine back in the day, right? Um, and I don't remember what the OS was. Oh, also has a floppy disk uh, port in here in the bottom, two um, PCI, and then one PCI Express video card slot. And then there's one IDE slot too. Looks like an 80 gig uh, SATA. So let me put this on this over here and boot it up and uh, maybe it won't even boot at all. Let me be right back. All right, let's see if it even powers up, shall we? This has a uh, 
onboard graphics um, on the motherboard, not in the chip. Oh wow, so it's uh, working, that's good. 2.5 gigahertz, dual core, 4850E, two processors. Uh, two gig of RAM, but 256 meg of that is shared uh, to the video uh, on board. Wonder what happened. Booting up. Ah, good old Windows XP. Gotta love it. Yes. So it's booting. Thumbs up. Uh, now I'm on the desktop. It's good old Windows XP. And there's some issues, of course. Flash player, yeah, it's not online. System specifications, Windows XP, Service Pack 3, and I just have it hooked up to my test monitor. And it's not that bad. It's kind of snappy for what it is, at least for Windows XP of the day. 80 gig serial ATA hard drive. There is a CD burner drive in here. Um, install a few games. Well, the first hiccup was <laughs> troubleshooting 101. And what might that be? Well, it had the Roswell power supply in it. It caused me problems. Failed. I ripped it out. I put in one of my brand new Cooler Master V550 gold modular power supplies. I didn't think it was gonna do much, but it was the Roswell power supply. I just figured I would test it, and uh, that thing was a culprit. Put it in the system, boot it back up. If you got a piece of junk or a suspect or a 15 year old power supply, you might wanna rethink using it. Make sure you got good steady voltages on all of your 12 volt rails, your five volt rails, 3.3, whatever you're using. Uh, make sure you have enough amperage on those power supplies and wattage to supply whatever you're gonna spec your system out for. There are online calculators that you can add in all your devices and the wattages that they consume, the amps, to calculate what type of power supply, range, wattage, etc., that you would need. So you, I highly recommend that. Just search in power supply calculator online, you'll find it. So that was a problem. It's a 15 year old computer, it's to be expected. Back in business. Unfortunately, when I was inspecting the um, machine, I noticed that the power supply was fluctuating and it died. So I had to replace it with a temp spare. Um, those things happen to old computers. This computer being 12 and years old, so yeah, it happens. Replaced the hard drive as well. It was acting up, so I threw in a 240 gig uh, Lexar SSD in there and loaded Windows 10. I'll see if I can bring it up to today's standards with a few upgrades. I've got Cinebench back here, let's start testing. It's got the Radeon uh, 3000 graphics uh, on the board. I wouldn't say it's great, but we're gonna see how it performs. Let's get into it and test out some benchmarks. There it goes, it's running. And then we can compare it to a few other machines. Um, obviously it's not going to technically compete with uh, today's CPUs, I don't think, but it'd be interesting to see. So, took forever. This CPU has got 426. I've decided that this machine is quite sluggish and well, I'm still going to test the CPU and see how it does in, the, in games and real world. But right now the system is just struggling and I am going to do a couple things. I am first going to put in some memory. I have a couple uh, two gig sticks from my PC parts haul, the $100 PC parts haul. I have to be able to use the computer, right? So 
I meant for this to be like a real world, world test where you could see, oh, this is the chip, this is how it's performing, this is the graphics on board. Everybody knows onboard graphics for these older systems are crap. Um, I don't know why I deluded myself. I'm gonna have to get a mid-range video card and put it in there and just run some tests. Let me at least see if we can play a game, any game, on uh, this system. And I've chosen an older game. Let's see if I can run it, uh, Half-Life 2. Let's check it out and see if it launches and let's see if I can run it. It's really struggling even with the opening cinematic. Got this 6670 card, one gig card, it's a Radeon. PCI Express doesn't require a secondary power input. I'm putting it in this old PC that I just salvaged from my parents because I just tried to play Half-Life 2 and it's really not playable. There is no way you can play it. Nice. So, so I figured that Half-Life 2 is an old game that people may still play, may not, but I think it's a good reference point for this system see what it can do um, and of course someone might have an old LG LCD monitor like this so it's just a good all-around reference. The 6670 card that I have in here was uh, released in April of 2011. It's like a uh, thousand times smoother. Not a thousand but you know. I have 60, 50 frames per second. The, only ones on that train? the GPU is 100% uh, max, using about uh, 64 to 100% of the CPU spiking. A lot of our RAM used. Game looks all right though on this system. So, yeah, you can play this old game with this one gig card, 6670. There's an X2 dual core. I think I want to stretch its legs. I want to really press it and see how far it can go. And it's probably going to hold back some of the uh, newer video cards. So we'll go for this one, the old trusty 7950 HD 3 gig card. We're going to slap it in there. We're going to boot it up and we're going to play some different kinds of games and then see how it goes. And maybe, just maybe, I think we're gonna have to upgrade this system further and see what we can do with it. Be right back. So we've got the new Radeon uh, 750 HD 3 gig card in, and you can tell the textures and the reflections are much better um, with the lighting. And uh, FPS is 50, 60. GPU does scale a little bit. The CPU is hovering between 87, 88, 90, using 3.7 gig of RAM. So we're pretty much tapped out. But you can play the game. 59, 56, GPU is barely being utilized in uh, Half-Life 2. So this game is easily playable uh, with the 6671 gig card and the Radeon 7, 7950 HD. Depends on what you have, you know? Oh, this guy's like, he likes to punch people. here. We know that this is uh, CPU, this dual core is being tapped out. So let's save. Let's see what it looks like playing something else.
The next game I want to try is Borderlands 2. I love Borderlands. I love Borderlands 1, 2, all of them. So I've got a pretty beefy character here. Um, FPS is 14. Um, GPU is spiking. Um, CPU is maxed. So I'm just curious on whether or not this uh, system, CPU, is bottlenecking this. Let's see if I can cap the frame rate and see if it'll help. I set it to unlimited, so let's see if we can cap it at 30. Does not help. 11, 14, 15 FPS. Still at 17 FPS, so we're gonna have to move on to another game, see what we can and can't play. But the GPU is spiking in certain spots, and the CPU is definitely maxed. Now we're playing Wolfenstein. We got 15 FPS, 14, and this is just the intro cinematic. Probably gonna die. I don't know where the tools are. I don't know why I can't pull up the overlay. It's not working for some reason, and I'm gonna have to pull up another one. And, uh, so something's just locking up. Ugh, come on. Running at 12 FPS. Not doing that great. Yeah, it's hard to play this at 10 FPS, you know? Can't seem to get any of the overlay software to work for whatever reason, but uh, this game is killing me at like 8 FPS and GPU is spiking to the max. Oh, but it's really horrible, horrible. Horrible performance, I don't know why. It's time to stop wasting time. I gotta do another upgrade on this machine. The CPU is severely holding it back. Enter the Phenom AMD Phenom 2 X4945 chip at three gigahertz. So this board should take it. I'm going to upgrade it plop it in there, give it quad core performance with 500 megahertz boost across all cores, and see if it can't help us with everyday usage for this computer. Got that chip on eBay for around $18. So see if it's a worthwhile upgrade and compare what we have. Let's put this in, juice it up, see what we can do. Make sure that the pins aren't bent. <clears throat> Should uh, lop right in. Secure the chip with the little 
give it a small dab of thermal paste. So if you see now, we have the AMD Phenom 2 X4945 processor at three gigahertz. I also put in another two gigaram just because it needed help. It seems a little snappier. All right, we've upgraded the system uh, to a 945 uh, quad core running at three gigahertz per core and eight gig of RAM. And we maxed out the settings, full screen, uh, frame rate kept 60 FPS, 1680 by 1050. That's what this monitor can do. And I'm trying to represent a feel of what it was, um, you know, 13 years ago for gaming play the game with a little bit better frame rate. So here we have Borderlands. The system has eight gig of RAM now with the 945 X4 Phenom 2 processor installed. And we have the HD Radeon 7953 gig card. Um, we're at 54 frames per second. Um, as you see here, up in the upper corner, we have the uh, ATI Radeon. System set up here for the overlay. All right. <clears throat> so 51, 50. Holding at 52 FPS. It's not really budging. 59 now. 54. We went down to 38 with some intense graphics there. For some reason. 50. So yeah, this uh, system's running good. Uh, now that we have that X4 945 processor. The system was bottlenecked previously with that X2 2.5 gigahertz processor. It just couldn't push any frame rates out. Granted, 40 FPS isn't great, but for this game, 100% playable. That is a definite improvement. So the overlay for the Radeon is just not coming up with this. Wolfenstein New Order, but we're at 59, 60 FPS. Well, the cut screens are showing 95, 100 FPS. Game being held back by that dual core X2 processor. Now we're at 35 FPS, 32 FPS. All right, so 30 FPS, 30, 43. 44. Um, it's playable. The frame rate is bouncing all over the place though, but it's 100% playable, whereas it was a slideshow before with the X2 processor. So this is another win, win, win for uh, the 945 upgrade quad core. Granted, this is not a new game. I consider this a great win. So what have we figured out from this video? You need spare parts for an old machine. Make sure you're ready for fixing, troubleshooting, all that stuff. It's gonna happen. You know, no machine is gonna last 12, 14 years. Power supply failed on this machine, replaced it. Hard drive, replaced it. Is it playable the way it sat when I first got it? No. Nah. If you had it in Windows XP, maybe. But real world, you know, you don't have updates for XP, so I put it up, I brought it up to Windows 10. 
did incremental updates, RAM, video card, CPU. These parts are 10 years old. And on the final upgrade was the 945 quad core uh, X4 chip. It helped tremendously. Of the single one of those upgrades, the video card and that uh, quad core chip was huge, huge. You know, I couldn't run anything with the uh, onboard graphics and even with the SSD. So if you've got this old platform, you got an old X2 chip in there, drop in the highest quad core chip that that board you have can support. And you should be able to do some minor gaming. You can play some good retro games like I just showed you, but that's the point. Keep your expectations within that realm and you'll be fine. Thanks for sticking through my struggles in this machine. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more old stuff and reviews to come.